just this week we have been seeing a lot of controversy in the mainstream media in the tabloid in the newspaper articles and most importantly on social media this is concerning our fallen judge Stella Among Arach who died unfortunately due to cancer unfortunately just as we were going to bury her we found that her two families were disputing over where her body should be buried this is her family that she grew up in in Nebi district and the family that she married in too which is in Ajumani her husband and, and her relatives are now fighting over her body and today's video we're going to first of all observe a moment of silence this is a moment of silence for our fallen judge and in today's video we're going to discuss what is a controversy around Stella Monga Rach's body what are the legal issues concerning it and who has a right to bury her body either in Ajumani or in Nebi so in today's video let's discuss all of these issues let's go <music> Welcome back to Lego. and uh, before I begin this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and also share this video with all of your uh, colleagues or people who you think would be interested in legal videos but most importantly everyone should be interested in learning the law because in every aspect of life we need the law into our lives. We need to understand these legal concepts, we need to know our rights my fellow Ugandans, we need to know what is happening around us and how it could also affect us. Yesterday it could have been Stella Monga Rach, tomorrow it could be your grandmother, it could be your parent, God forbid, it could even be you. But you could have made, let's say, a dying declaration concerning how you want your property to be given and how you want your estate to move. Most importantly, before we even begin, I have a legal mobile app called Famiron, which connects lawyers and people together, offering a multitude of other services. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you have a relative who you're in dispute with and you want them to be buried in another area, or you have any other legal issue, be sure to go to your Apple Store or Play Store, download Famiron, and be able to get a lawyer at your fingertips easily, and you'll be able to get the lawyer of your choice depending on what you want, and thereafter you can cast consultation fees with the lawyer on. So, now that we are into the video, I want to discuss the issue of Stella Mongarash. Who was she? She was a judge of the Supreme Court. She died 69 years of age and she succumbed to cancer, unfortunately. Most people in Uganda did not know that this judge was suffering from cancer and unfortunately she died last Saturday. Stella Among was one of the best judges we had in our judicial system. She believed in courage, she believed in justice and most importantly she had an unwavering and unfettering way of delivering her judgment. She had no fear of favor. That is why she's going to be loved and missed in the entire judicial system. Now, what is the dispute about this? Like we said, she passed on last Saturday and her husband, who is an ambassador, came into the country to then bury his wife. Stella Mungarach had a previous marriage before marrying the ambassador. Now, she had children with this previous marriage or she had children in this previous marriage. Her husband also had children in his previous marriage, but they later came and formed a union of marriage. Now, according to our customs, it's not written in law anyway, but according to our customs, we have it that whenever a woman is married into a man's home, then the woman has to be buried in the man's uh, area. Like the, the woman has to be buried into the man's ancestral home. So personally, if let's say I'm, I'm in Yankole and I get married to a woman who is let's say from the east, maybe Ites or Ates, she, even if she dies, she will not be buried by her parents' home, but she'll be buried in my home, in my ancestral home. Let's say I come from Ivanda or Mbarara, wherever it is. Now that is according to the customs of African culture. They believe that the woman becomes part of the man's home. So that is what the ambassador believes. Her husband, who is an ambassador, believes that since he was married to the late Taylor Mong Arash, she should be buried in his home area. Now, this is where the twist comes in. It was said that Stella Among, after leaving her previous marriage, she, it was her lifelong wish to always have been buried in Juba village in Nebi district. Now, Nebi was where her father came from. So she always wanted to be buried next to her father in her ancestral home where her father came from unfortunately the fact that she that she succumbed to cancer she could not be able to be here to tell us that by the way I want to be buried here the dead never speak and the dead never have problems so even if the dead die it's us the living who are going to face these challenges these relatives of Stella Mongarat upon hearing of the death of Stella and the husband wanting to bury her in Ajumani, where he comes from. Her four relatives have basically petitioned for to hold the proceedings of, 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 of the burial proceedings of Stella Mongaraj. What does this mean? It means that first of all, before, uh, as, as they had petitioned in court to have the burial halted, they also went ahead to lodge an application for a restraining order in that any money that is coming to facilitate 
the late Stella Mong's burial, any transportation facilitation, or even the moving of her body from, let's say, Kampala to Ajumani should be stopped until this issue is decided. So basically, they filed a petition in the Magistrates Court Family Division, which is in Mark India. And just as of yesterday, the judges in the court stated that this issue should be resolved as soon as possible because it is out of respect of the dead person that we lay her to rest in peace. First of all, she, she was a judicial officer, so she deserves the, the grandeur barrier that she deserves. She worked for so many years and the courts were saying that, you know what, this issue should be resolved. I don't think we should be in court over this. However, the family members both believe that they have a right. Either she should be buried in Ajumani or in Nebi. Now, just as of yesterday, Friday, they, the, the judicial officer looked at burying her in a neutral place in between Ajumani and Nebi, which is Arua. So, it was a suggestion came up yesterday stating that she should be buried in, in Arua Cemetery. I think it was Arua Diocese Cemetery, pending, pending the hearing of this case. Now, the family of the late Aracha Mong, where she grew up from, that is in Nebi district, was stating that, okay, fine, if you were to bury her there in the meantime, as we are trying to resolve this issue in court once you rule in our favor then we are, we are asking for an application to be able to exhume her body and then take it back to nebi the hus the the husband is now stating that no that should not be the case this was this woman is culturally married to me should be mar buried in ajumani so those were basically the big facts of what had happened now let us look at the law concerning dying declarations because the major issue or the strong point of the petition of her family members in Nebi are stating that by the time Stella died, she gave a dying declaration stating that I would want to be buried in Nebi. Now here the husband comes and says that we should bury her in Ajumani. So let us look at the law of dying declarations and then we move on with this. So what is a dying declaration? First of all, we must realize that a dying declaration is a statement that is uttered by a deceased person or a dead person giving wishes for how they would want their estate to be governed or where they would want to be buried or whatever it is. A dying declaration is, a, is our statements or the statement that a person who is dying or knowing that they're dying gives to their family members or whoever is present during their death stating that I would want maybe my estate to be governed by this or I would want my property to be, to be given like this, I would want to be buried here. So a dying declaration is a statement which is actually admissible in court. When you look at the law of evidence, a dying declaration is actually something that any judge or judicial officer listening to any matter will actually take seriously. Why is that? Because family law looks at the strength and will of a person's words. When a person states that they want to do something, let's say in writing a will, or perhaps giving a dying declaration, or perhaps making a statement stating that this is my final wish as I'm going to the great beyond. <clears throat> so I would want my people to conduct the rest of what I left on planet Earth to be done like this. So the family of the late Stella who come from Nebi are stating that they were present with her when this dying declaration was being given. And they're also taking into account her lifelong wish to have been buried in Nebi. Now, what are the features for a dying declaration to be valid? Number one, the deceased should be dead, obviously, because... When you're looking at also a will, a will can only take effect when a person is dead. Now, a dying declaration is like an oral will. I think that's the best I can, I can explain it to you. A dying declaration is like an oral will. If a person did not leave a will behind, well, the facts of the late Stella Mong are not as so clear as possible that she did not leave a will behind. But as far as we know, or as far as the facts are concerned, this person did not leave a will behind and she instead gave a dying declaration that I want to be buried in Nebi. So the family of the late Stella Among are petitioning in the family division magistrate's court stating that we want Stella Among Arat to be buried in Nebi because that was a dying declaration. So what are the grounds or, or what makes a dying, a dying declaration valid? The person must have died obviously the person must, must have not been coerced or forced into giving this dying declaration meaning that they should have said it out of their own will another point is that this person should have been of credible ground in that they should have been i'm looking for the best way to explain it they such a person giving a dying declaration it is assumed that by the time they gave that declaration even in life they would have been be able to defend what they were saying in their dying declaration so a person should not be forced in a dying declaration a person's words should be very clear they should not have been forced 
and this person should be giving a, a dying declaration stating that I know that I'm dying in a few minutes I'm going to pass I would want my I would want my third born son to get my Range Rover I would want my second born daughter to get the house in Kololo and this person should know that they are dying so meaning that if you look at another example if a person gives a dying declaration let's say they, they think that, they, that they're going to die this minute and after like 25 minutes they again wake up then that's not a dying declaration the dying declaration should only take effect when the person knows that death is imminent and they are just about to pass on. So, family of the late Stella Mong are stating that this dying declaration are one of their strong grounds for the petitioning of this, of this matter. Now, we also look at the, the restraining order. I already explained restraining orders in, 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 on this channel and I would like you to go and visit this video. I'll leave the link in the description. But let me just make it easy for you. A restraining order is is any document or is any order which is stopping any event or any group of people from doing a certain event or from doing a certain procedure. So in this case, the family of the late Stella among Raj petitioned in court and also filed an application, a, miscell a miscellaneous application stopping the burial proceedings of of the late Stella Mong, and this includes her husband who is the ambassador and government officials from the judiciary who wanted to carry on her burial proceedings. So it's very, it's, it's quite sad what is happening uh, in this particular matter, but uh, the court has not yet decided. Let us see what is going to happen later on. But when you look at the Marriages Act or the Customary Marriages Registrations Act, there is nothing which talks about how a woman who is married into a man's home being buried or it being a must for her to be buried in the man's home. So this basically means that we do these things in Uganda and in Africa, which is just customary. It's, it's in our culture as Africans to have the woman buried into the man's home. And that is the point where the husband is coming from, who is the ambassador. He's stating that I legally got married to Stella Amonga Raj, and he got married to her under the laws of Uganda, under the Marriages Act. They legally got married culturally and also in the church. So he's stating that under the Marriages Act, our, our marriage was, vo was valid, even if we did not share a child together. And no one has ever come to contest their marriage. They had been married for some time. So under the Marriages Act, he's moving under that. The fact that I'm married to her culturally and legally, we are supposed to move to the customs of my culture, stating that the woman or my deceased wife should be buried in my hometown or in my village. The children are now saying we are using the dying declaration and we're using her lifetime we should always be buried in Nebi. Now, what is the law for exhuming a body? Like I said, the court uh, currently stated that Stella among rats should be buried in a rural cemetery, which was just a suggestion, but a decision is going to come out very soon about that. That she should be buried in a rural, which is a neutral district between Nebi and Ajumani, pending a further hearing of this case and they'll finally give where she's going to be buried. For them, if, if the case is ever decided and they are going to exhume her body, you know there's an actual legal procedure for exhuming a body. We have the Inquest Act of, of, of Uganda and under the Inquest Act is where the procedure for exhuming a body is given. Of course, uh, there are certain professionals who have to come and exhume the body, dig out the grave, remove out the coffin and then take it to the place where the court has ordered. So. To even exhume the body, the family, uh, either one of the family, the husband of the late Stella Mong or the family of the children and the siblings will have to also file an application to have the body exhumed when the court decides in either favor, either of the husband or the family. So, I want to discuss these legal issues with you. Is the body of Stella Mong Arach supposed to be going to Nebi? We don't know. Is a dying declaration something that the court is going to use? Definitely, because a dying declaration and a lifetime declaration that someone has been saying for a long time is actually admissible in court. If they can prove that they were there in the dying declaration and they can prove beyond reasonable doubt that that was her dying declaration. If they have evidence of, let's say, a recording, a phone recording or of, or of a tape recording, given that Stella had said those words that she wants to be buried in Nebi, then that will also be admissible in court. We also have admissibility. Before I finish the video, what is admissibility of evidence? In the law of evidence, we have what is called admissible in court. I'm sure many of you have heard about what is admissible in court. Admissibility means what is acceptable in court. What kind of evidence can be tendered into, into any case for a judge to be able to accept it as evidence for either a case or against a case. So a dying declaration could be given 
a lot of attention if there's evidence about it or if there's or a person who was there doing the dying declaration can be able to go on the witness stand and utter out the same exact words that the, that the dying declarant or the person who died said those words and is the husband also entitled to having his wife buried in Ajumani in relation to their marriage or in relation to the customs of his culture let's just see so until next time i remain your truly terry kahuma and i'll see you bye